Hey learners, hope you all are doing well. In the previous lecture, we discussed about print statement and different forms of print statement. Today, we'll see input statement. Input statement are written when you want to accept some input from the user. For this, Python has provided input function. The syntax of input function is as follows. Input and to that you can pass any string which will act as a prompt. If you don't pass, it will just blink a cursor. So as I've said, whatever you write in square is optional. Now note that when input statement is executed, first it will display a prompt, then a cursor will blink. It will wait for you to enter something. Whatever you enter, it will return it as a string. Now it is the programmer's job to typecast it into the desired data type. So as I've already stated, note that every value that user enter is treated as a string. So we need to typecast the entered value into the desired data type. As an example, suppose I've written input and the prompt is enter an integer. So first it will display this prompt message. A cursor will blink. It will wait for you to enter some value. Now whatever value you will enter will be saved in S. But from the prompt statement, with we feel as if you are going to enter an integer. Okay, you enter integer, but that integer is saved in S as a string. There is a type function in Python to which if you pass a variable or any value, it will return its data type. So here it will display class string. This indicates that S is of data type string. Now you have to typecast it. So that string S have passed to int. It will cast that string to integer and it will come in X. Now if I print the data type of X, so now the data type of x is integer. Now suppose if I do this both operation in one statement only. So first, because of this input statement, one prompt message will come, enter an integer. You'll enter a value. That value will be entered as a string. That string will be given to int. Int will typecast it and return it as a integer. Now if I check the data type of s, it will be integer. Let's see this demonstration in Python interpreter. S is equal to input and I'm writing enter integer. You can see a prompt message has come enter integer. I'll enter 56. Now that 56 is stored in S, but its data type is integer. Check its data type. Print type and type of S. You can see the data type of S is class str. Similarly, if I would have done this in this way, S is equal to int input double quote enter integer I'll enter 67 and now if I check type of s it will be int int why? Because we have accepted through input, string is returned, that string is passed to int, int will convert it to integer. Now let's see one simple program for addition of two numbers in which we'll make use of input output statement. I'll click on file, new, a blank file is open, I'll save it. In our folder which in the previous session I've shown I've created one folder 
learn python in that i'll give the name as add it will give it will get saved as add.py i'll enter two values x is equal to int input enter first number y int input enter second number then i'll add this x and y and store it in z then i'll display z z equal to comma z we'll save the script we'll run the script run module you can see first input statement i'll enter 45 second input 23 and then addition of that two is displayed the same program i can write it in one statement c in this way print z equal to comma int input enter first number plus int input enter second number Now the previous script which I wrote, the same script I've written in one time. This input statement will give the prompt enter first number, I'll enter 56. That is returned as string, it will be given to int. Then this input statement, 67. This both int are added and then they are displayed by this print statement. Now let's move on to some elementary concepts of programming like what are identifiers the identifiers in python are the names given to variables class library module or a function now all these identifiers will have some naming rule as like in other programming languages these rules are to be followed by the programmer and these rules are checked by the python interpreter so as i said what are identifiers they are the names which identify the program elements the basic elements like variable class library module or function now what are identifier naming rules the first rule is all the identifiers can be made up of combination of characters now that characters can be lowercase, uppercase characters, digits and underscore. So that is the first basic rule. The allowed characters in Python identifiers are alphabet, lowercase or uppercase, digits and underscore. The second important rule is these identifiers cannot start with digit. The identifiers should not start with digit the next important rule is all the identifiers are case sensitive as like in c c plus plus java those who are familiar with that language but in some languages like in case of html or sql they don't follow such case sensitivity rule then we cannot use reserve words as identifiers so every language provides some reserve words they are to be used for that purpose only. You cannot use it for identifiers. There is no length limit for the identifiers. Like in some languages like C, identifiers initially they were 8 length, then 32. Now after C99 standard, there is no limit. So similarly in Python also, there is no length limitation for identifiers. So this was about identifiers. Then these are some basic rules if the identifiers start with underscore then that symbol indicates that it is private 
Now, this will be useful when we'll see object-oriented programming concepts in Python. Therefore, if the identifier, if you start with underscore, it is private. If the identifier starts with two underscore, then they indicate that they are strongly private. So that is somewhat like protected and private. If the identifier start and end with two underscore symbol, then the identifier is language defined special name, which is also known as magic methods. Like for example, the methods which are called implicitly, we don't have to call them explicitly, like two string in Java. So here also there are many magic methods which get called implicitly at the appropriate time. They start and end with two underscore. Few examples I have given, capital XYZ, variable underscore name, coke one, two, three, underscore new underscore name. These all are valid identifiers. Then next we'll discuss about keywords. Keywords are reserved words of the language. As like natural language also is having some reserved words like verbs, articles, and they are to be used for that purpose only. Nouns cannot be called as a reserve word in English. So similarly, identifiers are not reserved words. Keywords, as I said, they are reserve words of the language. They have their predecided meaning. They have their implicit meaning and you have to use it for that purpose only. The so keywords are reserve words of the language and they have their predefined meaning. They are to be used for the intended purpose only, cannot be used as a variable, method, module or class name. Now in Python, there are only 32 reserve words. That is what makes Python as simple and easy to learn because many unwanted or many redundant extra reserve words are removed from this language. They have tried to make it so simple that they have kept the reserve words very limited. But in other language like C, C++ or Java, all the reserve words are in lower case only. But in Python, some are in mixed case and some are in lower case. Few have listed true and false. They are used along with the Boolean. Note that true and false, T and F is in upper case. None, none is somewhat like void in C++ or Java. And or not is. We'll be using it at the appropriate topics. They, you can say they are logical connectives. Then if, elif, else, this will be using in the case of conditional statement. Then these are iterative statement, while, for, break, continue, return, in, and yield. This will be using at the time of exception handling, try, accept, finally, raise, assert. Import from, as, class, def, pass global, non-local, lambda, del, and with. Don't worry, we will be discussing each and every keywords in the appropriate topic. As I said, all the words are in alphabets. I mean, there is no symbolic words. All are in English. And that is the reason Python is high-level programming language. All are in lowercase except this three, that is true, false, and none. Then we'll come to the concept called Python statements. Now statements are instructions which are given to the Python interpreter. You can say the instructions which Python interpreter execute, they are Python statement. Note that in Python, statements are never terminated with semicolon. The new line is treated as an end of statement. The Python statement are instructions that are executed by the Python interpreter. There are different forms of statement like assignment statement, arithmetic statement, expressions, input output statement, conditional statement. We'll be discussing it in the appropriate topics. But 
point to be noted is no statement is terminated with semicolon like C or C++ or Java. But here, if you want to write more than one statement on the same line, then you can use semicolon as a statement separator. The semicolon doesn't act as a statement terminator, rather it acts as a statement separator. See, A equal to 5. I haven't written semicolon. New line is treated as an end of statement. Python use semicolon as a separator, not a terminator. So as I said, when you want to write more than one statement on the same line, then use semicolon. You can also use them as end of a line, which makes them look like a statement terminator, but they are treated as two statement. The second one is blank. Next, we'll discuss about Python comments. Comments are portion of code ignored by the Python interpreter. Used for making short notes, either as a documentation or for reminders of the functionality of a function. This makes the program easy to understand. Now, in Python, there are two types of comment. First is single line comment. A line starting with hash character denotes a single line comment. So any, any line which starts with hash, so till the end of line, that will be ignored by the compiler. That will be considered as a comment. As an example, I've written the statement a comma b comma c equal to 5 comma 10 comma a plus b. So above that, this is an addition of two numbers. So is this statement beginning with hash? So that will be considered as a comment. Then Python has provided multi-line comments also. As like there is a multi-line comment in C slash star till star slash. The same way in Python, there are three quote, beginning three quote and end three quote. But that three quotes can be single quote or double quote. Both are allowed. These are written within a block starting and ending with quote but that quote can be single quote or double quote see here i have written three single quote and then you can continue writing any comment till we don't encounter three single quote or double quote everything will be treated as a comment that's all for today in the next session we'll discuss about data types of Python and different operators which are provided by Python. So as usual, I keep saying, keep learning, keep evolving. Don't forget to click on the bell icon, follow, like and share. God bless you. See you in the next lecture.